Hey folks, welcome to iHeart Board Games, where today we're going to talk about our top 10 Stefan Feld games. If you don't know who Stefan Feld is, maybe you've heard of the term point salad. Usually the originator of the point salad is Stefan Feld. If you haven't played a Stefan Feld game, what are you waiting for? I guess you're waiting for this top 10 to see which ones you should play. You're going to hear about 30 of them. Of course, there's going to be an overlap. You'll lots hear about of, 15 of yeah. them. Lots of overlaps. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Ronald's going to kick us off with number 10. Okay, so we're not doing any um, whatchamacallums. What's a whatchamacallum? Oh, know, honorable mention. When right. you have an I honorable did not do mention. any. I didn't do any honorable mentions. So it's just you. You're kicking us okay. off with everything. I assume my two honorable mentions are going to be on both of your lists later, so I'll just say them now. One is Amerigo. It is. And the other one is Bora Bora. It is not. No, it's not. Oh, okay. Well, my other honorable mention is Bora Bora. It is a game that the first time we played it, we played it wrong. I remember <laughs> it that. It was at this house. <laughs> uh, but I have since then played it correctly. And it is a good game. It's a point salad game. All of them are. And you're moving your people uh, down to get a special power. And there's islands. And yeah. It's my number 11. <laughs> islands. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. It's a very gen general term. I mean, it's been forever since I've played that one. I really do want to break it out again. But you're right. When it comes to describing a Stefan Feld game, there's only so far we can go with these themes. There's not a lot of theme to most of the games. You could really put any theme on there most of the time. It's not always. Right. Okay, well, I'll go on with my number 10 since yeah, I'm yeah. first. Let's do it. Uh, my number 10 is actually a reprint for the City series, and it is one that I own. It is called Amsterdam, and it was previously called Macau. Oh, uh, these are not on my list. You're on your own from a cow. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be all crossovers, <laughs> nonstop crossovers. That, that'll come later, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> um, Macau, well, Amsterdam is a, it is a point salad <laughs> game. <laughs> Um, there's, gonna there's boats, you're sailing around to different harbors. I wish I can add to this because I haven't played Macau. I've, oh, okay. I've played it twice. My complaint about the, the new copy, the reprint, is that the cards that come in the box are language independent. So what they did was they just tried to put just a bunch of symbols on the cards, but every single card is different. And we could not solve what the heck these symbols meant. We had to constantly look them up. Mm. So I was able to buy separately the English version of the cards that has the text from that booklet on yeah. every card. And I did that for both of the ones I have for the City Series. Mm. Because it was just impossible to know what these cards all do unless you play it a lot. Which we don't. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. Um, I actually like the reprint better than the original Macau. Yeah, I have the and original Macau. <laughs> my number 10 is a game that was deserved of a reprint the moment i played it because there's some issues i had with it but i really like the game itself it's carpe diem no. carpe diem no. is my number 16 okay oh, yeah. okay full whatever i went all the way down to all the felts i've played i ranked them all the way down yeah so, yeah, so carpe diem has an issue in it in the there's a center grid where you're moving through the grid and like in the first version starch. yeah in the first one and the moment i did that i was like this could have been way e what's why am i jumping from side to side whenever i could have just been going around and that's exactly what they switched it to i hear i haven't gotten it myself because at this point now we talked about this when we just talked about steffenfeld reprints is that i'm just going to wait for a city series version of this <laughs> and just get it when it's called new orleans or something <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Des Moines. Des Moines. <laughs> Can't wait to play Stefan Feld's Des Moines. Uh, Melissa, your number 10? Yeah, so my number 10 is one of Stefan Feld's. Uh, he has two uh, like kid like games, family games, one of only two that he has created, and it's called It Happens. Uh, it is wow. about a little anteater and he is like digging through and wants to get to like the queen ant and the generals and it's a dice rolling game. And so I, I'm really big on dice games in general. Uh, it's it's kind of niche stuff because it's like it's not one that you would like always pull out of the fell collection. It's it's a it's a kid's game. It's a family game. Um, but 
when I first got it, it just looked so like, it's just cute. It's very cutesy. It's like these very colorful dice and you roll them to place them on the board to to receive goods and things. And it's, it's very easy, simple going. It's kind of like, you know, if you want to, I guess if you want to get your kid into the, the Feld, you know, dynasty of like, we're going to be a Feld family and, and start playing these games. It's, it's very, uh, just a very easy going little dice, dice rolling game. And that's I my that one. Yeah. I'm going to have to wait till they name it something else. To... Yeah. Well, we can, I have it. We could play it. You, you I think know, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Probably good. How, you know. All right, my number nine is Forum Trajanum. Whoa, definitely no, not. No. What is happening? Well, that's this was supposed that, to be crossover uh, city. I, I will say, had I made some honorable mentions, those might have been there, but I didn't make that. that I don't list. think that would have made mine though. Forum might have in in a, like a honorable well, mention. Well, it is his point salad game <laughs> set in like ancient rome or just trajan or someplace like that and you're putting these tiny little chits you're like flipping them over on this board and then you also are interacting with your neighbor and that you're passing some stuff and some stuff is getting passed to you um and there's a central board where some more things are happening as well uh, it's actually kind of complicated most of his games are and um it's but, my number nine but this one's like really complicated <laughs> in my opinion. i don't consider it to be the most complicated but it's it's pretty up there well that's a topic in itself you know we could talk about that later which is the most complicated felt but i in my memory i consider that one to be pretty high on the list i remember I play them all i remember playing it the one time like because we have it and so like i've played like essentially all the ones we've had i've played at least once but that one you know that one along with one of the other ones you mentioned early in your honorable like with your or, or once i played them it's like there's a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. i guess that's the best way to put it well jesse um, what about your number nine number nine sorry about any mic issues you and cat the cat may be causing uh my number nine takes place underwater under the sea it's aquasphere you better save that for later all right Ooh. all right <laughs> Melissa, number nine all right my number nine is oracle of delphi save it okay <laughs> all right okay. well my number eight <laughs> my number eight is absolutely on someone's list the reprint is called hamburg and the old version is called bruges so we'll talk about that later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it later what's yours Melissa? Wait, what about you? Oh, oh. you. It's the same. Uh, we have a we have a crossover number. Perfect crossover. <laughs> okay. We're number eight. That's gonna right. get really confusing if we skip skipping too fast, but all right. All right my number eight, Aquasphere. So. Well, save it for later. <laughs> okay, I told y'all this was gonna happen. Yeah. Right, this is gonna happen even more as we go. Number seven for me is gonna be on someone else's list. It's called Trajan. Mm. It is. Okay. Right. My number seven, right? Yes. Seven. The Castles of Tuscany. Ooh, save it for later. later. <laughs> later. Getting confusing fast. All right, Melissa. What's your number seven? All right, my number seven is a uh, kind of newer one. Uh, I believe you said a city series. Uh, Marrakesh. Save, save it for later. <laughs> okay, my number six. I'm not sure this is going to be on We're not talking about this. this this one's one of the more thematic ones. This is called La Isla. Mm -mm. Go ahead and talk about that yep, one. Yeah, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have different tastes from them, apparently, because they've been shocked by me. Okay, La Isla. This is the one where you're collecting little animals. Um, you want to collect your specific animal that you're most interested in and you're going around a little island. There's an island again. <laughs> it's point salad. Yeah, you're liking an island. <laughs> I, I literally have not played these games recently, so I don't remember all the mechanisms of how they work. I just remember liking this one a lot and it is one of the simpler ones. And I'm, I'm usually pretty good at it. That helps. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember that kind of being like a younger skewing a younger generation i think I, I tend to get that one and i think the bora bora kind of mixed up in my head it's maybe it's the, this is the one with the little dart frog maybe it's the timing the of dart them frog the frog and the little bird the dodo bird 
They're like extinct animals you're putting on. Whereas Bora Bora, you have people and jewelry. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's and like the shells. time of whenever they could. At one point, a bunch of them were coming at me at once, we learning played those them at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's what that mixes me up. All right, you want to go to your number six, Jesse, so that we can skip it. <laughs> yeah, let's skip Trajan. Is my number six. Oh, we get hear about that yeah. one. Again. Yeah, that's my number seven, but we'll wait for it later. What's your number six? My number six, I feel, has been mentioned. Amerigo. Oh, you gotta wait for Save him. Save it. You gotta wait for his. I'm not gonna <laughs> say what number. Okay, number five. I don't think anyone will have this on their list. Okay. <laughs> I'm so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's Castles of Burgundy. The dice game. Mm, oh, I, I do like that one, but I didn't put it on my list. No, yeah, did not put dice. Castles of Burgundy is one of the games that got me into the hobby. Uh, we found it at a, a game, like a a toy store, and we learned it on the floor of a hotel. We were on a vacation. <laughs> We'd never played a Euro game before, and then years later, I got really into Roll and Rights. And this is the roll and write version of Castles of Burgundy. I mean, Castles of Burgundy is already a dice game. So it makes sense to make it into a roll and write. It, is, it takes a little of the complexity away out of the game. I think it makes it a little bit more approachable. It's certainly much faster. And I don't have it. And I, I should get it. Well, you don't have the dice game? Oh, I don't have it. Uh -uh. Oh, wow. I think we, we have. Yeah, because yeah, we, play, we played it on stream before. Yeah, it's the yeah. thing about these roll and rides, they're really hard to play on stream because it's such a small piece of paper. Yeah, but that one, but that one was fun because, it, like you said, it just takes that that part of Castles of Burgundy that's the dice, that's the essential, like, what I roll here is how I decide my game, and that's your bread and butter, so that's what, you know, so that's kind of what makes the game i guess those those I'm dice getting to talk about most of my games yeah well you know we'll talk about our games soon. Yeah. <laughs> but i mean to go further on castles of burgundy alternatives i guess dice game comes out way more than card game oh yeah, i've never sure. played the card game oh I it yeah once, maybe. i just feel like it was like a, it's a huge table, table log i know yeah table log. i'm like let's get out the board game if we're gonna take up this <laughs> much room on the table it's not saving us any space but uh, so what are we on five? Five. Mm -hmm. So confusing. I think we can finally talk about Amerigo. Yes, Amerigo yeah. was my 12. It was my six. Well, there we go. We can talk about Amerigo. So Amerigo, you're. Well, I thought it was going to be your one. I am wrong. Wow. You I... took guesses on what my things are? <laughs> I, just Amerigo. Oh. I know you really love it. It's very good. Um, I like it because I feel like it has the most. One of the games that has the most theme for a Stefan Feld game is because you're traveling around a Island. fictional world. Island, sure, but it's a much <laughs> further scope of it. And you're building all these buildings on them and you're pulling off the resources from them. I feel like it has a b bigger theme and I love how it builds the map to be different every time. In a game, I mean, it feels like an old game, but I think it's from like 2012. It's not super old. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not one of the old, older ones. But when it comes to board gaming, 12 years can be an old game. Yeah. But, yes. but it says something about last the test of time, you know, like whenever it's so highly thought of still mm -hmm. now, all, all those years, and, um, you Cube know, to make tower. such a high number on your list. Not the first to do Cube, Cube tower, though. Tower. Oh, like Shogun. we still got that clip. That clip from many moons ago, that that on from stream where you went to drop the cubes in the tower, and like the one thing or something came out, and I was like, "What did you do?" Like, and there's like uh, my reaction uh, to it. Yeah, the reaction, the, like the four year look back thing. Because like you went to drop, and then like I think like one or maybe nothing, like nothing happened, and I looked at, I was like, "What did you do?" I don't know, man. Those cube towers are weird and mystical. Oh. And I love how the box, the box is such a, a very unique. A huge box. Yeah, it's huge. Large. It's a lot of room. Large Can't even box. fit in one of these square mm -hmm. shelves. Okay. But it's yeah, there we go. Check yeah. it out if you like exploring the world. And, you know, 
it, it might have it might have gone up higher for me if I were better at it. But I'm terrible at Amerigo, so mm-hmm. it it had to it had to land in the it's on BGA yeah, honorable mention. Try it some more. Yeah, I think I made my number six because it, it that five or six round, you know, your five, my six. It, it's like it's high on my list. I really love it. That the cube towers, you know, hugely a part of the the reason you love it or I love it so much. Um, but yeah, just kind of in that in that middle. Like I love it, but you I know. feel like we're going to forget to talk about some of these things mm-hmm. <laughs> because we've skipped so many. No, we're not. We're not. All right, just to make sure. Melissa, what's your number five? My number five. I don't remember which number it was mentioned on yours. Is Bruges? Ah, oh. Bruges was earlier. That was on my eight. My mm-hmm. eight as well. Oh, so this is the crossover now. This, the, the, this is the time. You guys can talk about Bruges, and I'll talk about Hamburg, which is this. <laughs> so when I first played Bruges, and I remember this very clearly, I was at it was like second year Dice Tower, I feel like, and it was during one of the Feldfest when we when they had the Feldfest for Dice Tower, and I was going over Bruges because it was part of the the fest that year, and I loved it so much. I hardly ever willingly teach games to just random strangers i willingly sat there and taught bruges to another just random person that wanted to learn it for the for the feldfest and it was it was one of the ones where it's like i understood it enough after playing it's like gosh i love this game because i understood enough to teach it to another person and i wanted to share with this other person like this is such a good game you should learn this and we sat there at a table in the middle of this big ballroom and played bruges and uh it's it's number five for me only because some other things have come out since that have kind of like you know gotten higher um but i just i really enjoyed my memories of playing playing it, that it used to be your number one spell yeah it definitely it was like a top top tier it's 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 fallen on a few numbers but it's still up there in the top of five it's, it's definitely up there um just it's just love is such a good gameplay yeah i could still get this game out today yeah. and i'll still have a good time with it uh funny enough with that one i feel like the expansions kind of knocked it down for me I little riverboat things a little boat graphically and everything it's there's some expansions out of these module expansions that i some reason i can't get into as much Mm -hmm. like i like when expansion just adds up one good nice chunky thought out piece instead of just these four ideas they probably had during prototyping and then they just threw them then you must not like seven fell because that's what he does on every single game there's a lot of expansions that i don't like with it (laughs) yeah like I haven't tried the Camels and Nomads for Marrakesh yet, but that is a module expansion. When I saw that, I was just like, okay, I might play with some of these, but I'm not going to play well, with others. We can, talk about that when we, we can talk about that when we get yeah. to Marrakesh. But um, for for Bruges, which is Hamburg in the, in the city series, they did update the rule set. So now instead of just drawing from two random stacks of cards, you can just pick up whatever color card you want. They're all organized. You can have a pink card and a purple card and a gray and an orange. I thought that was just a strange choice. Choose oh. whatever colors you want. You want five oranges? Go for it. Have at it. Wait, so how do you... Because in the, the Bruges, it's just those two stacks, and you have to pull from like, okay, I'm going to mm-hmm. pull this card. Now I have two options. Yeah. Pull this card. I have two options. Right. So now how do you, you get have more a, than two? You always have an option for whatever color you want. Well, all you- the pinks are here. All the purples are here. All the grays are here. Oh, yeah, so instead of just cards. two stacks of two cards, you got all those stacks. Yeah. yeah. I kinda, so you can just take whatever colors you want. I, I like the ability to take I whatever have, color. I've been screwed before on that game. Yeah. Like, well, the only color I need is brown. And all that's coming up is yellow. They change yeah. the colors in the reprint. But I, yeah. I like that. I liked the randomness of it because you could get really messed up with only I mean, getting those certain colors. But I always liked this, like the mystery of, oh, if I pick this one over this one, what's going to come next? Oh, am I going to get the color? Well, it's okay. it's weird. It's like so I it like is, it both it, ways. It is a <laughs> dice game. It's also a card yeah. game and a multi-use cards. You can use the cards for like six different things. Mm. So. Um, it's got a lot going on it has some random elements to it and it does have the modular expansions including the boats the player powers a whole bunch of other stuff some of them are hits some of them were not we've tried almost all of them with my group uh that's why it was my number whatever it was y'all have a crossover number crossover number eight eight Eight. Eight. y'all's crossover yeah Okay, but we're actually moving on to number four now. Yes, because that was my number five, was Bruges. Okay, okay, my number four is Aquasphere. 
Oh, that was my number eight. Perfect. It's time. Okay. Mm. Aquasphere to me is one of the most complicated Sevenfeld games, and I love the theme. It's not set in some cr- crusty old medieval city. It's got nice colors. It's really like there's purple and yellow. It's vibrant. And you're you're like underwater and you have these sea creatures that are inside of your sea vessel that are moving around. It's once again action selection. Yeah. Rondell. Uh, point salad, all the classic Stefan Feld things. This one's really crunchy. It burns my brain in the best possible way. Ooh. And it's a puzzle. It's a really nice puzzle that you have to solve. How to move your guy up the little track to get the actions you want to do. Yeah. I think that's what I like about I like Rondell's uh, overall just as a mechanic. And so I really like the, the movement of that one because that's something that i enjoy in other games uh and i i did like that it's like all this underwater kind of feel so it's not like a lot you kept saying oh on an island and on an island oh we're on an island no we're we're not on an island (laughs) (laughs) under la isla yeah so it has a different kind of feel to a little different kind of thematics and sci-fi and so I, i really like the look and the mechanics of that one yeah for me it's my what number nine I wish it came out more, but it just hasn't in a long time. And maybe that's why it's knocked down to my number nine. Somebody got to know the rules. You can't just right. stumble through that. It is too many things going on. Yeah. Perfect for a, like a BGA, but it's not a BGA. Not yet. Someday. But yeah, I do like Aquasphere. I do like how it's a different take on what we're used to seeing from Steffenfeld. So I was happy to see when that came out because that was mm. late. Uh, 2015, 16, yeah, something it's like that. Not a later one, but still, you know, within the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, but it was in a time where we were so used to just these dry Euros coming out from mm-hmm. them. So finally got a nice, colorful one. <laughs> but yeah, that moves us on to number four for me. Mm-hmm. This is one I introduced recently to Ronald, and that is one called Bonfire. It's my number. That's all. That's further up. Further, further up. Let's from wait me. on that. Thing. Yeah. So, Melissa, mm-hmm. what's your number four? My number four, I think, has already been mentioned. Was Trajan. Trajan yeah, was Trajan. my number six. Six. And, and my number seven. Oh, so, so we could talk off. about it. Uh, so we recently played that one again for the first time in a, in a long while. We, the two of us just sat down at the table. It was like we want to play this game again. We haven't taken it on forever. So let's kind of almost like re reteach our brains like how how to play this and when we sat there to play it i was like everything kept just coming back to me it's like oh yeah yeah that's how you do this oh you move that there it just started just clicking everything started coming back to me it's like oh i really do really like this one cool about trajan is it is a point salad and it's like six different games in a in one box you're playing different games depending on which area of the board you go to. Mm-hmm. And you have that Rondell thing happening yep. with yeah. you. <laughs> like Rondell's. So there's a lot to think about. Mm-hmm. It is, it's pretty high on the crunchy side to me. Mm-hmm. It's a game that it's, it's got a little age to it. It's, it's been out for a little while, but I still, even after all these years, I start everything started coming back. I was like, I, I really like this one. Like it's, you can kind of step on each other's toes a little bit here and there, depending on where you want to go on the board. But for the most part, you can kind of, like you said, play a different game than the other person based on choices you make. And based on choices, you're going to have different play every time. There's even one with boats and islands, if I'm not mistaken. One part of the board it. has boats and islands on it. Is that the very s- top of the board? That's like a no, going no, out military. Land. Like oh, it's okay. like well, a military. There's definitely ships. I don't know. Uh, no, you got a you got a big legionnaire and a, the little ones. That yeah, go there's out. a yeah, there's like like kind Those of all boats, militant right? things. No, they kind of walk and like they have to go to their place. And if you there's get like, there and you have, there's absolutely both. Oh, yeah, there there is a there's a ship part where it's three cards, and so you're, oh yeah. yeah, I knew there was a ship. <laughs> there's yeah, there's, Islands, there's more, but But it's just three cards. You're doing like a set collection thing, then whoever claims it first flips it. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned uh, this game age showing only in components. The gameplay is really easy to me. Honestly, when we pulled it back out, some of the mini rules or rules for the mini games, I guess you'd call it, Mm -hmm. they're like 
a paragraph, a short paragraph. Yeah, it's and it's so, easy to kind of like just get back, get back yeah. into. I think I think it was one of his easier ones to play, especially mm-hmm. when I think back on ones like Aquasphere and stuff like that. But yeah, I'd say this one was an easier one to wrap my head around. Yeah. Maybe not to master, but at least just to get into. Which was my number six. Your number four. Four. So we're now moving on to number three, starting with Ronald. Let's get into some crossovers, I imagine. Yeah, I know this is going to be on y'all's list. It's called The Castles of Burgundy. I've heard of this. Ooh, I've... And it's on so my we'll list. So we'll talk about it later. Yes, I my believe number, this will come up later. My number three is The Oracle of Delphi. Or Delphi. Oh, that was my... A lot of people say That so. was my number nine. Uh, it wasn't even on your list, right? Oh, yeah. It's my number oh, 17. <laughs> and your number nine? Let's my talk number about nine. The Oracle. Uh, this is one of my favorites because the Steffenfeld Racing Game. It, you have these, I think it's nine goals set in place. You're racing around the map trying to finish these goals. It's mm-hmm. all in Greek theme. So the story is that Zeus has tasked you to do these tasks. And whoever does that, I guess you're favorable among the gods. And I just really like jumping around the map, finding cool ways to move around the map. Usually I have a good experience with that game, teaching it. Unlike Aquasphere, like some reason Oracle sticks with me. The rules stick with me and I, I never forget how to play that one. Hmm. But it was your number what, nine? Number nine. And mostly because like uh, me and racing, I know you like a lot of racing mm-hmm. style game. Maybe it's a little too like pressure cooker for me like to get there like oh no i'm never going to get the stuff like i like the little boats and i liked the gameplay but the racing part for me is like a little oh i'm never gonna make it you know but i still like it it's a good game but that's why it made number nine yeah i mean i've obviously played it uh you're right it's a racing game mm-hmm. that's not stefan's usual modus operandi instead instead of this casual i know i have 50 rounds of European Euro style <laughs> actions to get what I want done. Now it's like, I, I, I got to hurry. I got to do everything as fast as possible. And somebody else is already four steps ahead of me. And it, that doesn't feel good to me. So that's why I did not make my top 10. Yeah. But. So my number three, I feel like has been mentioned earlier, is Castles of Tuscany. I mentioned that. Ronald has not played it. No. This was my number seven. Number seven. Um, when we first got that one, if I'm not mistaken, we played it two times back to back. We sat did. there and played it, and if I don't not more than that. If not more, we might have played yeah, it two or played two or three times, like in a row. Like just sat there, is like, oh, I want to play it again. Oh, I want to play it again. I think I've only done that ever with maybe one or two other games ever. Um, I think we've done it a few times. But that's not usually for me Let's to. We got the game ask. out. Let's go ahead. Yeah. And just keep it's playing. not usually for me to ask, like, oh, look, can, can we play again, like, right now? It's not a Seth and Fell. Yeah. Because Fells can be a little, like, you know, a little longer than, than some. But there was something about it that I was like, oh, I really like that. Let's try it again. Because this was a learning game. So maybe I could do this better. And there was just something about, like, the, the colors are very, like, orange, greenish kind of colors. And. It, it brought a little feeling of like a castle some burgundy as kind of feel for style and like the you know it's the pieces and whatnots but there was just something about it that is like i want to play it again i want to play it again let's do it again it's like that yeah. just don't doesn't normally happen for me there are shades of castles of burgundy in this mm-hmm. game L- little shade it's li- little castle feels. of burgundy light it mm. is less thematic than Castles of Burgundy. You don't even really see your domain like you do in Castles of Burgundy. We'll talk about Castles of Burgundy later. But Castles of Tuscany is very stripped down version of it. And I like that that, that what is it, a lion head or something? That big like the 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 turny the turny wheel thing, like where you like depending on where you go and the thing you're turning it. Yeah. Because you gotta go to the like the next part. And so there's just this really big like that, but. Yeah, it's like this because there's like this orange, orange green kind of little Dialy thingy or something where you have to like if you're on the this part and the next person on this part oh, and you right, have to right. spin the, scoring? the yeah oh, the yeah, scoring the thing red and the green yeah I like the little score and the little scoring mechanism like I I thought I it was know, neat that's one of the pulls for me 
Oh, I thought it was neat. That's that was one of the pulls for me. I like that little like yeah, so turn the, the thing. Scores, the three round score. <laughs> one of the chips moves throughout the game. The other chip only moves at the round's end. So mm -hmm. if you're if you have thirty points, then that other chip's going to move thirty points. But if you only earn like five points, then the whole thing's going to move thirty five points in the mm -hmm. next round. You know, so every round really matters. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting scoring mechanism. Yeah, it's it's unique. Like that's one I think that if you haven't played it, it yet, it yeah, we'll have to give that one a shot. All right. Well, I'm beginning to believe since we only have two left Ooh. that my number two is not going to appear on either of your lists, which is pretty weird. I think <laughs> I that's must normal. Admit, my number two is Luna. No. I remember the theme sticking out to me, but not so much the gameplay. So this one is another big point salad rondel game. <laughs> um, this one's interesting because it takes place on islands. That's kind of unique and different <laughs> and interesting. Uh, you're going around these islands and you're trying to build little shrines. And you also have, uh, I think the theme is that these are worshipers and they throw themselves off of the island into the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not quite sure. It's, There's also a yeah, couple of figures that are moving around the island with you. Oops, sorry. They're moving around the island and they, depending on where they're standing, special things happen. I really like this game. I showed it to my friend recently back home and he declared it as his least favorite Sevenfeld and immediately <laughs> called it. Wow. And I was like, I think you did that just because I told you I like it. <laughs> that and that is one thing like I, I remember getting Luna and I was very excited when I was actually able to find a copy of Luna because it's not one that's very easy to find. Um, and I do remember when I played it for the first time, it was in the hallway, not even in the ballrooms. It was in the hallway, set up a table on like Sunday afternoon. They were closing the Yeah, combat. last, last game of that yeah, con that year. There, yep, yeah. you were there and you were not were, there for us. No, I, I, you were there. And you were there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I first played that, you know, not at a convention. Yeah. I, see, I remember, like, I remember the moment of, like, in that hallway playing it. I was like, oh, I really like this. I but don't not think, enough to go I, into your top 10. I don't think I've played it since, but I own it. <laughs> but, you can play it with me eventually, because. Yeah. Because I don't think you. Yeah. Have you played it? I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, I remember liking, kind of liking the theme, or at least memory. Uh, having a memory of the theme because it's not a theme you really forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very pretty. I do like like the little like because it's little pieces that are kind of like separate little islands of on their own for the pieces to go. Yeah, it's pretty, it's old pretty. All right. Well, Jesse, what's your number two in this case? My number two, I think we can talk about it. It's going to be Marrakesh. No. Oh, yes, Marrakesh is my number. We can't talk about it yet. No. Darn. Mm. Hopefully soon. Mm. Poof. Melissa, what's your number two? My number two is one that I feel like we've mentioned earlier. Bonfire. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that was my number four. So it's I think my number done. 16, I think. 16, okay. Oh, no, Bonfire is my number 14. Oh. Uh, and what, Just what was barely Bonfire missed. for you? Four. Four, yeah. yeah. I've only played it once in my defense, so I really don't. I don't have a good opinion of it at this point. I've only I've only played it once. So. Yeah. I think <laughs> I played it two or three times at this point. Uh, it's just there's something about the the play mechanics of it. Like I'm I'm like I find myself such a Euro gamer, and that's probably why Feld is so high on my list. Um, but it's very Euro style, like very like very systematic I, I like again this very step by step very systematic of like okay if you do this now you're going to do this and if you get these parts here that's going to help you to get these parts and now if you get this and go here and get the person and that's going to help you get the person to put the that that is something that's just like combo yeah it's like I, I it's like oh if i do that person and i put him in this ring and then i get those pieces i'm going to take those and then do this and i'm like that that is just so like hype energy for me when it comes to like gaming i just want that aspect of like oh if i do the this and i get the things and i'm gonna 
oh yes, I've got, I got all this stuff. And, and I liked filling in all the parts like, oh, this looks so pretty. I'm going to fill in all these. And, and it does have a nice little theme to it. Like it, it does. It's a there is a thing. There there's is a books. Yeah. There's, there's a, like a big book on the website or something. Yeah. yeah it's, it's got, and it's so pretty. Like I just, I like all the components of it and all the boats that you get to sail around the top and the, the, the wheel thing that you, you're going around and getting the goods. And there's just so much about it that I was like, gosh like i know this only been out for like four years now it's kind of a, a newer felled oh yes oh see he likes bonfire too you you agree you like bonfire yep yep see he agrees he agrees yeah so that was my number two because it's just it's number two is bonfire mm -hmm, number wow. two well it, it it's very high. Well, well, yeah well it probably make number one if, if other thing you know well, we'll get to we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. it's my number four. I think the components could have used some help in some parts, like those little squares are kind of hard to handle. But of course, mm. they, they can't they can't get too unwieldy, I suppose. You know, but you know, I can't wait till they rename it <laughs> Moscow or something. No. <laughs> <Bonfire>. <laughs> Remake the whole thing. Pioria. Yeah, this is finally a Stefan Feld that isn't from Queen Games. Yeah, that's a recent release. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's 2020. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And they just have the uh, Trees and Creatures um, expansion. So oh, yeah. you have to try that. Yeah, we don't have that expansion. It's modular, of course. Oh, more of that's, <laughs> that's how he rolls. Um, but yeah, Bonfire is a great game. Yeah. I think that's Love another it. one we had left set up on the table and played it again. Mm -hmm. So it happens with that. I think we're moving on. Number one. Number one. I think we already know what my number one is. It's Marrakesh. Ooh. Yes, this is my number two. And it's my number seven. Yes, uh, we played this game for the first time at a convention. Mm -hmm. We were basically kind of like camped out, waiting for another table to finish with it <laughs> so that we could get it. I, to get I had learned the rules. There are a lot of them. And we just kind of stumbled our way through it as best we could. I think it took us three or four hours to play. Yeah. It's not and so no. at the time, I thought, all right, it's another Stefan Felt. What do I care? Mm -hmm. But as the convention proceeded forward and the end of the convention went, it was the one I just kept thinking about. I couldn't get it mm. off my mind. And the new Kickstarter for the City Series came out just right after that and i'm like you know what i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get the nice one the big one Ooh. and i'm gonna get this expansion too and um i have played with almost all of the expansions at this point some are better than others but boy is that a really nice game and i'm not good at it but it still is my number one so, wait did we skip yeah. number two we skipped number two my number two uh, i said my number two is bonfire yeah, my number two. Did you say was... your number two? I didn't say my number two. <gasps> no, I didn't say my number three. You did say your number three? Yeah, Castles of Tuscany. Well, when did we talk about Castles of Burgundy? We haven't yet. We haven't. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. <laughs> okay. Marrakesh. Yeah. Marrakesh Great was my game. number two. Point solid. Yeah. Point for you, Melissa? It fell number seven, and uh, some of it's because I haven't really, I've only played the one time we played at the convention. I've I played it there. You haven't played our copy? I haven't played our copy There's a yet. boat on a, on we a have river. The essential. It's yeah. a little different. Yeah, I haven't played our copy. I've only played, I haven't played it since we've gotten it. Um, and not because I'm like, no, I don't want to play it. It's just, it hasn't come up. It's just, it, it, like you said, it's a longer game. It's going to take a little bit to kind of like, get it out and play it uh and but there's something to be said about games that like you're saying you're not good at it but yet it's your number one it's because there's something about it, it's like i could lose every time all the time <laughs> uh but i still love it because there's something about it that makes me want to go back like that that's a real true testament to a good game oh no Cats are going crazy. And, and now you have no cats. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Move my legs. Yeah, it's good. true testament to a good good top game. Oof. They're getting angry. They're getting restless. Um, 
All right. Are you getting restless in the chat there? Let us know your favorite fells and where they fall. Because we're ready to talk about... Well, I do want to talk to a little bit about Marrakesh first. Because mm -hmm. the Essential Edition. You haven't touched it yet. Yeah, I haven't. This is one I've considered doing the second backing just to get the big version. I've made my small version work. It does work better on a smaller table. Our streaming table is a smaller table. Yeah, I don't it know. is huge, Very the regular huge. version. Mm. But it's, it barely fits on my table. Yeah, and you have a large table. Uh -huh. um, so that big version is much easier to teach, I think. The small version, the essential, has this weird step where because the pieces are smaller, you have to do some exchanges to get them to place them on your board since you're not placing wooden pieces anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the gates are not the wooden gates. Of course, with the expansion, I eventually got the wooden gates. So I got all the nicer pieces except for the Keshis. So all the Keshis, not all the Keshis, some of the Keshis are cardboard and some of them aren't. Well, just pop open, uh, what is it, Trajan? And just... Yeah, there's <laughs> ways to get them for sure. They're not expensive. They're the little octagon pieces that are super cheap to get. But in the game or in your on your board, you don't have spots for them. They're made for the other... Of course. Flat cashies. Yes. Mm. Um, it's cool. Part of it's cool because you can flip the cashies and not see the octagon anymore. You see art of a person. Um, but there's just this weird step that I have to explain to people like, okay, after it drops out of the tower, you don't take that one. You take a paper version of one. <laughs> you know, there's like, this, huh? it's like, why can't I just take that? I guess if you learn that at first, maybe it's fine. But I didn't learn that at first. I learned the fancy version first. Right? Mm. I call it fancy. The normal version, not the essential. And it's so strange to come out with an essential so fast, but I see why they thought they needed it. I think the Nomad expansion is good. My my crew likes to play always with Nomads. Camels, however, that changes the game so much that I don't like playing with it. Mm. It becomes a completely new stuff different game at that point. How many modules are there? Ten? I don't know. Yeah, the okay. big expansions are the Camels and the Nomads. The rest are all small expansions like Player Powers. Got it. More of this kind of tile, more of that kind of tile, you know, stuff like that. But the Camels and the Nomads are hu two huge expansions for the game. Mm. The Nomads are like a, a wild Keshi that comes out. Oh, okay. You have to pay it, though, to use it. And you can even move it around your map and make it become different things mm. if you pay it. You can't, yeah. it won't do it for free. <laughs> and only one comes out every turn, but it's guaranteed to come out every turn. Hmm. So I don't know if anyone noticed, but um, Marrakesh has been in the background this whole time of all these videos. So we do like it. I just 3D printed an insert for it. So oh, making it a little better. fancier, trying to get it clo as close as I can to that fancy city series edition that costs $150. But you had a number two that we haven't talked about yet? Oh, we spoke it's, about a bonfire. Okay, so we are caught one. up. Yeah, I, that was my number one. That, that we're on number sure. one. <laughs> I mean, all right, number one, the Castles of Burgundy. Ooh. Special edition. Uh, Not you? I, I, I love all Castle of Burgundy, all edition. <laughs> But is that your number one? Yes, that is my number one. I did not specify special edition, but That's I love that one too. It's that just Castle right. Burgundy. Three, so. That's your number three. Okay, uh, so it's three, all, yeah. it, average wise, the highest of the list. Of yes. course, how could it not be? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's one of the games that got me into gaming. How could I not include it? Mm. How could I not see yeah. it? It's an yeah. original love. Uh, it my was, problem is I've now played it like 300 times and sure. I'm a little sick of it. So that's why it dropped down to three. You got to try the special edition. If we had made this list when I first wanted to make it five years ago, it would have been number one. Absolutely. No question. But it's just gone down a little bit. Well, I'll say it's not uh, not only has it been my top game of all time of all games. It's my top felt. It's my my top game period of, of all board games. Uh, it's just something that, like when I play Castles of Burgundy, I have the same feeling like how you were saying with Marrakesh, you know, it's like, you know, I don't feel I'm good at it. I've never been good at Castles of Burgundy. It's it's one of those games like, I think 200 might be my shining glory of highest score ever, which is a good score, yeah. but I've never exceeded that. I usually 
don't get a huge high score. Um, I normally don't win. I normally don't do well. But there's something about Kesselberg that always brings me back to it. There's something to be said about like, I lose nine out of 10 times. You know, it's like, but I love it. I, no matter what I've ever done in gaming, I always go back to that game. Like I get emotional th thinking about like, ah, like you get emotional about a game, like, but I get emotional about that one. I, and I usually don't like expansions. Like I'm really weird about like, I just want the base. I just, uh, the base game and I'm good. But I really like the deluxe edition expansions. Oh my gosh, that changed that game What's for the that? better. Monasteries, goats. It's like a vineyard. There's, a vineyard? Yeah, there's like a vineyard. Mm -hmm. like this. Y'all ain't showed me none of this. Yeah, and it's beautiful. The, the, the deluxe edition have these like gorgeous miniature castles that are just, just so I well made. That? I don't need that. They're, no, we they're did not gorgeous get the 3D. Though. They come with the 3D castles, which is fine. Mm -hmm. We don't need the full board 3D. No, no, well, no, no, no. We didn't did get that. No, we, no. But we got the acrylic. We got the the little castle. Acrylic's really yeah, nice. Yeah, the, the acrylic, the little I mean, castles. I'm over here with my 2009 version that looks like a third grader made it. <laughs> a third grader from the 16th century. I mean, it got hardly no color to it. It's very drab. We kept ours. Very Yeah, drab. yeah, we still have our original. Very I would never. Very ordinary looking. I don't know why we, the only reason we bought it from the toy store to begin with was because we looked it up on the internet and it had good reviews. We would not have bought it based on the box or based on the components. I think uh, we bought it for the same reason because we ordered ours. Yeah, it was something about like, it was a really big game at the time. It was a very staple game of the board game community. I think even to this day, it is a huge, like if you are going to describe two board gamers that aren't big big into the hobby but they're coming into the hobby and you want to suggest a game to them n nine times out of ten i'm gonna say castles of burgundy like that's what i would suggest that they play that's why i suggest where they start if you want to get into a euro game of any kind like if you want to start euro gaming because as a euro gamer it's it's hard it's really hard to get people into okay, euro gaming it's a dice game <laughs> It is, but it is point salad and it is spelled like shine to me it's like a shining glory of his of his it, it is it is very well loved in the community, oh, I would so think. Many editions. Yeah, and, and, and the and the, the deluxe edition is beautiful and I love the expansions. Special edition. Well it's special. I thought it was deluxe. Deluxe. It special. is deluxe-ified, okay. but it's special edition. Well ours is ours is deluxe because we got the the fancy castles but the well, most people do the expansions are really good like the little module expansion with the vineyards i usually don't yeah, add any of that's that one that actually but stands out really good like yeah they have the shields in there as well mm -hmm. yeah a lot of the things that came with that awakening Realm or awaken realms is behind that they brought us nemesis mm. they brought us the great wall they, i mean all of their productions are huge yeah there's there's just a lot there, there's so much good to be said about castles of Burgi that like I say, I honestly, I get emotional thinking about that game. It's like a, a, a good emotion, like like a, oh gosh, I just love this game so much. Like it's something, yeah, yep. something about we it. We got everything for it. But if you have any yeah. special fails that we didn't mention, or maybe you're right on board with us, post them in the comments below, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, the box is closed. Is closed.